that President Muhammad Idris Dabi has launched a security operation to track down and neutralize several hundred Boko Haram fighters who attacked and killed on Sunday more than 40 Chad government troops in the Lake Chad Basin shared by Cameroon, Nigeria, Niger, and Chad. Debbie visited the area on Monday and assisted in the burial of his soldiers. Moki Edwin Kinzeka reports from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Chad State TV reports that President Mohamed Idris Debbie has ordered that flags be flown at half mast and that all radio and TV stations in the Central African state should play on the religious music for three days from October 28th at midnight. Debbie announced on Monday the three days of national mourning after visiting Gauboa, a western village in Lake Chad, on the island of Bakaram, near the border with Nigeria, where Boko Haram fighters killed at least 40 Chad government troops on Sunday night. According to Chad State TV, videos of David dressed in a military uniform and present at the burial of soldiers killed have been broadcast several times since Monday by local TV stations, including Chad State TV. After the burials, David announced the launch of Haskanite, a military operation with fresh troops deployed to Lake Chad to search out and eliminate members of the terror group hiding in the large area. Debbie spoke on Chad State TV. And talk to all that is unique. So to this app. So to go to that man. He says as president of Chad, he is the supreme commander of government troops and guarantor of the security and safety of civilians and that he has ordered Chad's military to protect civilians and their property by tracking and eliminating Boko Haram terrorists who committed atrocious acts on government troops and are hiding in the vast Lake Chad. Chad officials note that Haskanite is a straw and resilient plant that grows in deserts and in the Lake Chad area. The deployed government troops are experienced and have the equipment necessary to defeat the jihadists, Debbie said. Chad military officials say they estimate the number of soldiers in the jihadist attacking force was 300 and that the surprise assault came Sunday at about 10 p.m. In addition to the 40 deaths, several dozen government soldiers were injured, they said. Scores of the attackers were killed and the fighters succeeded to escape with some dead bodies and seized weapons according to Chad's military. Many civilians either died or were injured in the attack, Chad military says. Debbie ordered that all civilians and troops receive medical care free of charge. Chad's military says the heavily armed jihadist fighters took control of the garrison before torching vehicles, motorcycles and buildings equipped with heavy arms. The attackers disappeared in the waters of Lake Chad and surrounding villages. Saibu Issa, a conflict resolution specialist at Cameroon's University of Marua, says it will be difficult for Chad to single-handedly fight the jihadists in Lake Chad. Issa says it is obvious that poverty and hardship push Boko Haram fighters who either surrendered or were weakened by the firepower of forces from Cameroon, Nigeria, Chad, and Niger to rejoin smaller jihadist groups in Lake Chad. The United Nations says over 40,000 people have been killed and 3 million have fled their homes in Nigeria, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad since 2009 when fighting between Nigerian government troops and Boko Haram militants degenerated into an armed conflict and spread to Cameroon, Niger, and Chad. Moki, Edwin Kinzaka, VOA News. Somalia has declared an Ethiopian diplomat working in Mogadishu a persona non grata. 
In a statement issued on Tuesday, Somalia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs accused the diplomat of engaging in activities incompatible with his diplomatic role. The diplomat Al Mohamed Adan, who is a consular at Ethiopia's embassy in Mogadishu, was ordered to leave Somalia within 72 hours of receiving the notice. Somalia did not specify the actions alleged committed by Ali, but the statement said they constitute a breach of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Somalia and Ethiopia have been involved in a heated diplomatic dispute since Addis Ababa signed the Memorandum of Understanding with Somaliland, a move Somalia sees as infringement on its sovereignty. Ethiopia and Somaliland defended the Memorandum of Understanding. If implemented, it would give Somaliland recognition from landlocked Ethiopia in return for the raising of 20 kilometers of seaport, according to Somaliland officials. In April, Somalia expelled Ethiopian Ambassador Mokta Mohammed, alleging internal interference by Ethiopia. Somalia also ordered the closure of Ethiopia's consulates in Somaliland and Puntland, though they remained open. Last month, Somali Prime Minister Hamza Abdibali, speaking at the UN General Assembly, urged the international community to stand with Somalia in condemning Ethiopia's violations. Bali alleged that Ethiopia was attempting to annex parts of Somalia under the guise of securing sea access. Taye Atske was the foreign minister of, at the time and rejected the Somalian prime minister's comments, insisting that Ethiopia's memorandum of understanding with Somaliland is based on existing political dispensation in Somalia. Ethiopia's name can never be associated with any one of the allegations, said Taye, who has now become Ethiopia's ceremonial president.